Hello everyone, and welcome to this new video tutorial for Maverick Render. In this tutorial we will introduce you to our new Rhino to Maverick Bridge plugin which will allow you to easily send your models from Rhino to Maverick. In the Try section in the Maverick Render website you will find the Rhino to Maverick installer, which can be downloaded for free. Once it is downloaded and run the installer will automatically detect the versions of McNeil Rhino installed on your computer. Once the bridge plugin is installed, we should see the Maverick toolbar in the Rhino UI. In case that we don't, we may right click on any other Rhino toolbar and activate ours by its name, Rhino to Maverick. The Maverick toolbar presents three buttons. The first one sends the whole scene, or the active selection, to Maverick. The second one will update the whole cellae, or the active selection, in Maverick. The third one will take you to our YouTube channel, or our blog, for video tutorials and other information. We will use this scene with two crossing rings to illustrate our Rhino Bridge plugin's workflow. We strongly recommend that you use layers in Rhino to organize your objects per material. This is by far the most efficient way to keep your scenes in check. Let's send our scene to Maverick and wait a few seconds for Maverick to boot up and display the models in the IPR. Here it is. First thing you must make sure of is that you are using the right navigation mode in the start dialog. You most likely want to select Rhino here. In the objects panel you will see that things are organized in Maverick just like they are in Rhino. Let's go ahead and apply some materials to our objects. Let's go to the jewelry section in the shading library. We will pick the diamond material from the gems category. If we drop the material to an object, the material will be applied to that object only. But if we drop the material while holding the alt key pressed, the material will be applied at once to all the objects with the same material as the object you are dropping to. Alternatively, we may drop materials to the objects panel instead of to the IPR. This way we may apply materials to object groups, which are more easily identifiable. This is the main reason why we strongly recommend that you properly organize your models in layers in Rhino. Let's keep going by applying metals to the rings. If we decide to go back to Rhino and make changes in the scene, such as moving one of the rings, the update button will synchronize Maverick with Rhino geometry wise, but keeping the material work that we just did. Likewise, if we keep working in our scene in Rhino and add new objects, the update function will preserve pre existing objects and bring the new ones so we can work on their materials. Now we will move just one of the diamonds and update the selection instead of the whole scene, which is much faster. As you can see, the scene updated instantaneously, which is quite convenient. Let's work a bit on our scene for you to see how to create photo real renders with little effort in Maverick. From the lighting library you can drop ambiences. Ambiences in Maverick are pre-made configurations with lights, an environment, and a floor of a room, crafted specifically with product presentation in mind. For jewelry in particular we recommend the ambiences in the IBL white and studio sections. If you drop any of them you will see how well high quality illumination performs in Maverick. You may enable the denoiser to get rid of residual image noise more quickly. Here's a satisfactory first light setup for our scene. Let's configure our camera viewpoint now. Let's place ourselves where we think will look best, and hit the save camera position button. Alternatively we might create a new camera. Let's now enable depth of field by right clicking on the IPR and selecting disable global DOF. 
In order to set the focal plane we may right click on the IPR wherever we want the camera to be focused at and select autofocus. Alternatively we may use the shortcut Control shift and left mouse button. Let's use our focus pre-visualization feature to clearly see what parts of the scene are in or out of focus. In order to adjust the amount of blur outside the focused region we must go to our camera's properties. Let's lock exposure and increase the aperture like we would in a real life DSLR camera. Some depth of field always brings a little bit of extra realism in 3D images. The ambience we just used features physical lights itself. Let's try with another one and practice some manual light creation. In the lighting library, under lights, you will find some pre-made gradient lights that simulate real-life studio photography hardware. Choose some that you like and drop them to areas that will enhance the contours of your piece of jewelry. Our normal light tool will auto-activate and with the mouse wheel you will be able to slide the light further or closer to the geometry. This tool provides some other interesting shortcuts you may read about in the help panel. Our YouTube channel covers the normal light tool in some specific tutorials as well. Once all lights are laid out, we may use one of the most powerful tools in Maverick, Light Mixer. Light Mixer allows you to adjust each light separately without the need to re-render the scene, so you can make multiple variations or moods of your scene very quickly. Once you're done with Light Mixer do not forget to commit the changes you did to the scene. Light Mixer can be used at any later point if needed. Finally, the Tone Map panel provides very powerful tools to do post-production tweaks. Once you're happy with the final look of the image it is time to fire up a final render. In this case we want a PSD with or jewelry piece detached from the background with its shadows and reflections turned into separate editable layers. To this end, let's select the ambiences room and make sure that the backdrop option is enabled. In the compositing panel, let's enable render sets and type in the word all, so all the elements in the scene are rendered. In the still frame tab in the render panel we will configure the output resolution and file name. For the output file format we will choose PSD 16-bit. We enable the denoiser and lower the target SL to 9, which will be more than enough for this scene. Let's hit the final render button and wait a few seconds for our PSD layers to compute. When the process completes, let's open the resulting PSD file in Photoshop. We will see how everything is properly organized, with the elements of interest conveniently detached as layers. This makes it trivial to replace the background or do post-production editing. Next to the PSD in the output directory you will also find a PNG file with a transparent background and the object shadows embedded. This file is extremely convenient if all you need is to overlay the render on your website or a product brochure. Let's wrap this workflow tour up by setting up a turntable for our jewels. In the turntable tab let's set object rotation and preview the animation with the scrubbing control. The room is rotating as well, which is not what we want in this case. We may fix this by locking the room in the objects panel. Now we can further configure our turntable's render quality. In this case we will enable the denoiser and lower the target SL to 8, which are typical good settings for turntables. Let's make sure that video encoding is enabled, and choose an output path name. Here you can see the resulting video after some minutes of render. This is all for today. We have taken a tour through the Rhino to Maverick workflow, achieving photo real results very easily. If you need further details on any part of the process, we invite you to watch our other tutorials in this very channel. See you in the next video. Have fun rendering with Maverick.